Hi guys, welcome again to our MPLAB XCA Tutorials for Absolute Beginner Series. This is tutorial 112, getting started with ESP8266 Wi-Fi transceiver. The ESP8266 is a wonder Wi-Fi module. It can literally give any microcontroller access to Wi-Fi network and this will enable countless Internet of Things and home automation applications at a fraction of cost compared to the alternative options. It's really easy to use, it's popular, you can get countless of online tutorials covering this module. It has really stormed the world of makers in recent years since 2014. You can now build your own cool electronic devices that communicate to the internet and can be accessed from anywhere in the world as Wi-Fi is very convenient to use to build connected applications, especially for home automations. Before this sounded very complicated and expensive, but not anymore. The ESP8266 is a low-cost, small-size self-contained system on chip with integrated TCP IP protocol stack and a 32-bit microcontroller manufactured by a Chinese company named Expressive. This Wi-Fi module can be used in various IoT and home automation applications. With it, you can create a web server, send or access data with HTTP. It can be used in wireless IP cameras, baby monitors, can send emails or even post tweets. Sound crazy? Yeah, some Twitter accounts are not even run manually by a person these days. They are automated bot. These are the pins of this chip can go through the data sheet to learn about the functions of each pin. We're not going to discuss it here. The electrical characteristics, the power consumption of this chip, and a lot more you can go through the data sheet. You can buy the chip and integrate that into your product, but a lot of people don't do that because the module based are so cheap. Several manufacturers have incorporated this ESP8266 chip in their hardware product. There are many versions of this chip available as modules on small board with different functionalities and exposing different input-output pins made by Expressive and third-party manufacturers. AI Thinker is the company that made this chip popular, especially with their famous ESP1 module. This is a board that you likely see covered in many tutorials. It's really cheap. It can cost you about $5, but the number of input and output pins are very limited and they are not breadboard friendly. You'll have to use some kind of adapter to use this board on a breadboard. There are also some other boards from AI Thinker, but they are not widely used like this ESP1. They've got ESP2, ESP3, ESP4, 5, 6, ESP7, ESP8, this is the 9, ESP10, ESP11, and ESP12. This is also widely used. It's got more pins, so you'll be able to access the 10-bit ADC pins, which take 0 to 1 volt as input. You can also easily use it in your own board, you can just solder it on top of your PC board or you can easily solder some header pins to it. Olimax has got also some ESP8266 board like the Mod Wi-Fi ESP8266 dev. It's also one of the third-party modules that give you access to all pins of the ESP8266 and it can easily be mounted on a breadboard with just some header pins. SparkFan has got also their SparkFan ESP8266 Think board. The Adafood Husa ESP8266 Breakout board is also a popular module. It can be very confusing, especially for beginners, to find the correct board to use, but be assured that they are all based on the same chip and can do basically the same functions. The difference is usually the number of input-output pins available on the board. There is no difference in programming, so choose the correct one based on your requirement. 
with PC board manufacturing becoming more and more cheaper these days, one of the options is to incorporate one of the ESP8266 modules into your own design. Modules that expose all or most of the pins like the AI Thinker ESP12 or the Olimax Mod Wi-Fi ESP8266 dev can be used. You can just build your own ESP8266 base development board, a home automation module or an IoT node station for example by simply adding more components to your design like the required 3.3 volt power supply, some relays, sensors, connectors and header pins and even incorporate a TTL to serial converter for easy programming. This is basically what we have done. We have designed our own development board using this Olimax module and incorporate it into our own ESP8266 IoT development board, a simple open source hardware with ESP8266. We've got a 3.3 volt power supply based on the popular cheap and simple to use voltage regulator, the LM317. The power supply should be able to provide at least 300 milliamp. Even though the ESP8266 can operate in sleep and deep sleep mode where power consumption is very low, it can consume high current during programming mode, so don't power it from the TTL to USB connector or from your Arduino board. You can refer to our breadboard power supply tutorial to learn how to use this voltage regulator. We've got also a push button to select the booting mode of the board. We've got a relay connected to GPIO5 that can be used for home automation applications to control high voltage devices. We've got also some header pins for easy access. This project was sponsored by PCBWay, a low cost PC board prototype and assembly company based in China. They produce good quality PC board at a reasonable price. You can get up to 10 PC board for only 5 US dollar. You can even choose the PC board color of your choice from the green, the red, the yellow, the blue, the white and the black with no extra charge. Not many PC board companies offer these solder mask colors for free. They normally charge you extra for any color beside the standard green color. To place your order online, just need to register for free on their website. You just click on join. And if you're a face buyer, you'll get five years dollar for free that you can use for your face order. This is the board layout of our project. It's very simple to build. And these are the PC port we received from PCB Way. Let us now solder and assemble quickly this board. And voila, this is our simple ESP IoT development board. The ESP can be used as a standalone microcontroller. It's got input and output pins, 10 bit ADC, and support a variety of protocols like SPI, I2C, 
usart and of course it's a wi-fi module you can run complete applications on it alone it's just amazing all this for like five bucks that's why it's so popular we're gonna test this development board with a simple code to switch on and off a light bulb connected to the relay the ESP8266 chip can be loaded with the firmware so it can be programmed using 80 commands with a simple PC terminal you can program this chip in this configuration you can also send 80 command from any microcontroller via the USART module this chip can also be programmed using a language called Lua or whatever they pronounce it this is a powerful efficient lightweight embedded high level free scripting language which support object oriented procedural as well as data driven programming this chip can also be programmed with micropython a subset of the powerful high level python language it can also be programmed with arduino ide it's not an arduino compatible board thanks to the community you can get an arduino plugin for this that allows you to use the arduino ide that's what we're gonna do quickly to test the board this is our setup the usb to dtl serial converter we set the jumper to 3.3 volt position the ground pin of the converter is connected to the ground pin of the board the rx pin of the converter is connected to the txt of the board and the tx of the converter is connected to rxt of the board we power the board with an external 5 volt power supply the first pin is 5 volt and the second pin is ground to program this board with arduino is very simple open the arduino ide go to preferences file preferences the only thing we need to edit in this field is the additional board manager url so enter the url which will add the esp8266 support to arduino gonna enter this url click ok now go to tools board click on board manager go down select the esp8266 this is the latest version click on install it's gonna take some few minutes to install the board have been installed close if you click to tools the board under the board now you can see we've got the esp8266 board they are now available let us start a new project we're just gonna use a, the example the blink example click on blink we're gonna select the generic esp8266 module board the flash mode we're gonna leave it to qio the flash size gonna be 2m the upload speed we're gonna select 57600 and the com port we're gonna select our usb to ttl com port which in this case is com 10 now we need to select the correct pin our relay is connected to gpio 5 so we're gonna change this led built in which is normally on the on pin 13 to 5 we're just gonna increase the delay to 3 seconds when the relay is on and 1 second when the relay is off let us upload the code okay the upload was successful i'm gonna switch on the power supply and voila the relay is on for 3 seconds and it off for one second this was really easy with arduino you can program the esp8266 the same way you would program an arduino board in this tutorial we just wanted to test the board in the next tutorials we're gonna go deep we're gonna use a pic as the main processor and interface it with the esp8266 module for wi-fi access thanks guys for watching 
and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when we upload new tutorials and i will see you guys in the next tutorial thank you